Mayor Bill de Blasio's latest efforts to rein in the horse carriage industry recently got a big boost. On March 1st, the city began enforcing a new rule banning horse carriages from waiting for passengers outside of Central Park, in effect kicking the horses and their drivers from 59th Street, where they have been doing pickups and drop-offs for 160 years. Instead, drivers have been told to move their pickup spots, also known as hack lines, to three locations inside the park, something they say will hurt their business. The move is just the most recent salvo in the battle between Mayor Bill de Blasio and the carriage industry, a battle that began during the mayor's first election campaign when he promised to get rid of horse-drawn carriages on his first day in office. The city council prevented him from keeping that promise, but carriage drivers say that this and other proposed regulations prove that the mayor remains committed to destroying their industry. Christina Hansen has been a Central Park carriage driver for seven years, and she joins us now. Christina, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on. Now, Christina, the three places within the park that the hack line right. has been moved to, right. it's not that far from 59th Street. Is it really that onerous for you and your fellow drivers? Well, even though it seems like it's just a short distance, it actually changes almost everything about our business. The way our business is regulated, the way it's set up, the way we've done things has all been predicated as being on 59th Street, where people can see us, where we can move from one stand to another, where we can comfortably drop off and pick up people, where there's a curb and a nice sidewalk for people to approach the horses. Where they're putting us now, some of them aren't even suitable for horses. They're downhill. There's not a proper sidewalk. People have to, the horses are standing in the middle of the road where people can't really approach them. Right. Yes, Central Park is, you know, one of the most visited places in New York City, but people approach it from Central Park South, from outside the park. Sure. Well, you know, the argument the mayor and his supporters are making is that it's simply inhumane to keep the horses on 59th Street with all the congestion, all the noise, all the hubbub, all the fumes of 21st century New York City traffic. <laughs> well, Do they have a point? No, yeah. they don't. Um, first, I didn't think you would think no, that. No, no, well, but I mean, you know, first of all, air is cleaner in New York City than it's been since the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And traffic in New York City is safer since they started taking records in 1910. And we are the safest vehicles in midtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. As for the horses, it's the 59th Street is what they're used to. Uh, horses are creatures of habit. They don't see any problem with that. That's where they get fed. That's where they get petted. That's where they get their carrots. That they hang out with their friends. That's their home away from home. Mm -hmm. And to just take the entire herd and move them, they don't understand the politics. Of it. They didn't have a problem there. Scientific studies of our horses have shown they actually have very low stress levels, very low cortisol levels when they're actually standing on 59th Street. You're making the argument, you and your fellow drivers, that it's actually more damaging to the horse's health to be where they are now. Explain that again. First of all, the horses are used to being on 59th Street, so, so, yeah. so they're going to be stressed by the move anyway. Right. But they're also putting us inside the park in places that weren't designed for horses to stand. So they tried to put us downhill. We've refused to park downhill, but downhill, when a horse is standing downhill, they can't stand up without using a lot of effort. Right, so they're engaging their muscles yeah, the, the whole time. The, the whole time, you know, whereas if mm -hmm. they're standing on a level surface or slightly uphill, they basically stand there without any effort. They can, in fact, go to sleep mm. standing up and doze lightly. So the city's asking us to put us in a place where they can't, our horses can't actually rest. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult to access our water troughs. They're also saying that if we don't have enough parking spaces, which we don't, that we can't even stop and wait anyplace else. We've got to keep moving and driving from one stand to the other. It takes 15, 20 minutes. You know, this is actually going to cause a lot more work for our horses. Mm -hmm. You and others, such as Liam Neeson, a big supporter of yours from yep. day one, are saying that this move by the mayor is just the first cut of a thousand cuts that he wants to right, inflict right. on you because he still wants to kill the industry. Right. What are some of the other cuts that you see coming down the Well, path? you know, they've talked about doing things like, you know, that might sound good to the Somebody at first glance, you know, like, oh, they want to introduce a heat index bill, you know, that lowering the temperature from 90 degrees, absolute temperature to 90 degrees with the heat index. So what is, what's the difference? The heat index includes things like humidity, uh -huh. but we already have the lowest stop work temperature in the country. At 90, the horses stop working. Uh, we missed 33 days of work this summer. If because you, it reached 90 Because it reached 90. And that system's been in place for over 30 years. We've never had a problem with a horse due to heat. It's protected our horses perfectly. And the sole purpose of that, and the animal rights people have said it, is to prevent the horses from working. <laughs> If you prevent yeah. the horses from working, we can't pay our bills, right. we can't take and care of our animals, we can't the pay the stable bills. As I said in the introduction, the reason why Mayor de Blasio was not able to kill your industry on day one was because the city council stopped right. him. 
Is the city council as friendly to you now as it was five years ago? Well, they certainly are. I mean, the tricky thing is that the animal rights people, A, are trying to present things, oh, we're not, this is just further regulation to help the horses. They're not helping any horses here. And the mayor, with the hack line change, actually circumvented any oversight by the city council by going directly mm -hmm. through the DOT, through his agencies that he controls, through his commissioners and, and other folks mm -hmm. to order them to do this. So in a way, he's abusing his power and circumventing the democratic process through the city council. So he's shown that he doesn't care what the normal process is here. The DOT refused to meet with us. That was under orders, presumably. Department from of Transportation. Yeah, the Department of Transportation uh -huh. and making this hack line change. Otherwise, we were told them you can't park the horses downhill. Yeah, yeah, but listen, but what about the argument that there shouldn't be a horse carriage industry? That, in fact, it is inhumane. It's not romantic. It's not beautiful. It's inhumane to the animals. Pounding the pavement is bad for well, their health, yeah. and that These they're are always they're <laughs> always shackled like like well, like prisoners. That their stalls are too small. Are that all, it is too hot in the summer, the, et cetera, et cetera. That, that we've gone beyond that. These are all arguments that have been put forth by the animal rights activists for 40 years. You can go back and read all the newspaper articles that said the same thing over and over and over. And as we showed, when the mayor actually went to ban us, you know that none of it was true. The horse but the ASPCA, the venerable ASPCA, as well as the Humane Society of the United the, States, they both want to ban the, the ASPCA industry. is not venerable. <laughs> they got into a whole bunch of controversy over carriage horses where they were targeting our industry for political reasons. They're the co-founders of New York Class. So they, Which is what? The New Yorkers for Clean, Livable, and Safe Streets. That's that lobbying group that's paid all that money to get the mayor elected, mm. that has had unparalleled access to the mayor's office. They're not venerable at all. And the Humane Society of the United States is an animal rights organization. Mm. They're not interested in animal welfare. Mm -hmm. We're interested in animal welfare. The city council's interested in animal welfare. That's why we have all these rules mm. and regulations about vacations and veterinary checks. That's all for the health and welfare of the horse. Okay, we have a few seconds, but I, I have to ask. You sued the the Department of Transportation, right. the, most of the suits, right. if not all of them, were dismissed. You went to court, you lost in court. What's your next step? Well, I mean, we still have an appeal. We also hope that in hopefully discussing things with the city council or with other agencies like the Parks Department and the Conservancy, that we can work something out to make this workable. The way it is now isn't workable, but we, we know 59th Street, Central Park South, better than anybody mm. else on the planet. There are ways that you can make mm. that street better for the horses, better for the pedestrians, better for the bicyclists, mm -hmm. better for everybody. And this this plan doesn't do that. It actually makes it less safe for are the, everybody. Are the, last, last question, are the carriages going to be in New York City in five years and are they going to be on 59th Street? Uh, yes, yes. We, we, we're <laughs> not going to go anywhere. We've been there for 160 years. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. We're a New York City icon. All right, Christina, thank you so much. All right, thanks. Me. All right.